I changed the diesel pump, so really I should check the time in. So let's get that done. So this is our diesel pump and you time it in the same way as you time an old-fashioned uh, petrol distributor. We've got two bolts down here which hold it to the front of the engine. We're going to stabilise the bolt down there. We've got the four diesel lines here which we'll have to slacken off. Uh, and then with a dial gauge in the back, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, we simply pivot this toward or away from the engine uh, until the timing is in the right mark. So to do that I need to move the crankshaft until it's got its timing marks in the right place uh, and then fit our dial gauge adjust the engine until the dial gauge reads the lowest point possible that'll be our zero mark I'll set that to zero and we put it back onto the um, position on the crankshaft uh, and then pivot this back and forth until it reads one mil or 39 thou so I'll just show you on one of the spare diesel pumps we've got back here. I'll zoom in and put the light on so you can see. So this is the back of the diesel pump. These are the four hard diesel lines that come out. Here you've got a screw which I've already taken out. Uh, it is here somewhere. I'll pick that up later. Oh, it's up here. There we are. So that is bolted in there, we take him out, and then this is a dial gauge. If you've not seen one of these before, it just measures how much push is on the bottom there. This one's in thousands of an inch. The Mazda Bongo, it needs to be in mil, and essentially that'll sit in there. Uh, and then as you twist the pump, that'll adjust like that. So I need to make something that's going to allow this to sit comfortably in there. Now it doesn't fit too bad, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put tape around the edge and have that taped in there so it's kind of wedged in. A bit of electric tape around the edge, that will form a nice tight seal, I can just push it in and then that should be good enough for what we need to do. Now to set these to zero, uh, like on a diver's watch, the outside, oh, that's me pushing the bottom, the outside of these, the outside of these rotate. So we'll rotate it until we have the mark on zero and then we'll adjust the pump until it pushes up to, oh, we're going to go too far, so I literally need to push it. We're going to be around there on the bongo, 39 thou. When I refit this, uh, I forgot to put this little copper washer on the front, on the pulley, before the bolt. So now I did contemplate just drilling through here and putting a, a big enough hole in the timing cover just to put it on. But that's a proper bodge and you'll end up with bits in the timing cover. So I'm just going to unbutton all this again, quickly change this so that's done properly. Can end was a sketchy. I could not get the van up on the ramp so you can see they were all sliding. And I'm here on my Todd, so I wedged them in. And it worked a treat. Okay, so I'm under the van. And those two marks on the crank is what we're looking for. One is top dead centre, one is 10 degrees after. There, there's a pin. And that's what we're going to line them up with. Now, I might paint these white. Uh, and then I'll paint the pin white and I'll have a good chance of seeing everything from up there. Now it looks like I might still have a diesel leak or some sort of oil leak here, so I need to keep an eye on that. It could just be from where I've changed all this up here recently, so I'll just keep an eye. Right, let's get those marked up and see if we can see them from the top. There we go. That looks to be about... 10 degrees, so the first mark is top dead, second mark is 10 degrees. I was actually using the camera 
up there with the torch on filming it so I can actually see where the marks are because you can't quite see it from the top. I do have a mirror up there. Now, there is another way to check the top uh, dead centre and the, the 10 degrees past, and that's on the gearbox. So I've uncovered that and I'll show you that now. So if we dig back down here, that fails me while I get down there. Quite oily down here. There's the plate. And you can see the marks. I can't quite read what the marks are saying there. But we should be able to see some degree marks of the top dead. Okay, so you've just seen down there that we've got that on the 10 degrees on the gearbox marking. So we know that second marking on there lines up to the right place. Um, next thing to do now is I'm going to take the airbox off just to give us a bit more access down there because you know, this is quite in the way. We're going to slacken off the four diesel lines, the hard lines down there. I don't know if you can see them, it's basically these lines down here onto the uh, fuel pump. I'm just going to slacken them off because we're going to be adjusting this and of course we don't want those tight because it's going to put tension on the pipes. Uh, and then there's a bolt down here we're going to slack off, one at the back on the other side and the carrier uh, bolt which is down, you can see the bracket, let me change your camera. Uh, I've got the torch on, you can see this bracket down there. There's a bolt that goes onto the pump on the side here. We're going to slacken that off. Uh, and then we're going to get rid of the middle bolt, which is a 12 mil in there. That's the one I showed you on the um, the one in the basement. We put the dial gauge in there, and then we get this adjusted. Okay, what I've discovered is... Now, I was taking these pipes off just to make it nice and easy for you guys to see. But my dial gauge doesn't fit in the gauge in the gap rather between here and the blooming start there. So it's two bolts. Start motor should come off. So I'm gonna get onto that. Right, I've got that off. It was only those three bolts there. Now there's more taken apart here than I was hoping to do for this. But now you can see I've got good access. I've taken off another pipe, I've disconnected that pipe there as well. So we'll now get my dial gauge and we get it in there. We'll check where we are. Okay, there's my dial gauge set. What I'm now going to do is turn the crank until that needle doesn't go any further. Right, so it's... There we are. So it's going back up there. That is my zero position. So now, with that in position, what I'm going to do now is set that to be zero by turning the dial and then we'll reset it to 10 degrees past top dead center and then we'll adjust until it's at 39th hour or one mil. There we are, we're at zero. I'll get under the van and I'll reset it to 10 degrees. So there we can see we're currently on between 70 and 80 or 60 and 70 rather. So I'm just gonna rotate my pump like this there we are, like an old distributor, until that gets to 40. There we are. That should be our timing set, a lot more fiddling than I was hoping for. So I'm going to get this button back up and we'll take it for a spin. Okay, turns out I made quite a big mistake. I turned the engine until the needle stopped moving, is my hand, until the needle stopped moving on the dial gauge. But I've looked back at the video, it was going up rather than down. So I set it to its maximum dwell and not in zero point. So when I started the van up, it took ages to start and then it ran like a bag of crap and I forgot to film it. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So I went back, I reviewed the footage of uh, what I'd taken myself. And I was looking at it, I think, yeah, I needed to keep on winding the engine forward until that needle came all the way back to a rest again. So I've got it totally in the wrong position. So I've stripped it all back down to where it was, and I'm about to do it again. Right, excuse the beat then. That's a bongo for you. So now you can see I'm doing... And the dial is going down. Right, here we go again. Right, 
I've got that adjusted to 39. Right, that's all buttoned back together. Let's see how it starts. Might help if I put this in. There you go. Let's do a bit more glow plug action. Jerry there. Like he's only firing on three cylinders. So the reason it sounds like it was run on three was I hadn't done up one of the uh, injector hoses and now she sounds awesome. See, the oil light just went out. Before I went on holiday, it was flickering. I topped up the oil, I tried everything to get rid of it, and it just stayed flickering. All I've done is leave the van for a weekend, and it's working. Right, let's go for a drive. So I took the van for a test run earlier, and I put my foot down. There wasn't much power, and there was a big patoosh sound, almost like pressure building up and then bursting out. And I've come under here, and I can see that the air intake pipe down there, if it's going to focus, has popped off. So it looks like the boost pressure blew the pipe off here. So I'll refit that and then I think we could do another test drive. I might adjust the timing slightly, just tap it a degree or so, just to see if that improves things. I'm not sure. It's under power and just changing gear in the wrong space. I'm wondering now if it's not the timing on the pump, or whether it's the uh, I'm stop talking to a bit of driving. I'm wondering if it's the throttle position sensor. There is no gut sickness at all, and there's my oil light flickering on again. So definitely a problem here. There's no power. Swing this around and get it home. Right, I worked out why it was underpowered. This pipe here had cracked, so when I was adjusting the uh, diesel pump, the old tube had become quite uh, quite worn and it cracked at the back there. So this lets the fuel pump know how much diesel, uh, how much turbo pressure there is. That's probably why this pipe down there popped off when I was trying to rev the van up. Uh, so I put that back on and now it seems to be running lovely. Just ignore that. So this is all the old diesel that we took out. That's a mix of uh, petrol, fresh diesel, and all the veg oil that was in the tank when the pump stopped working. I've changed the pump. Um, I've been for a couple of trips. We are pulling a lot of dirt out of the tank, so I think this tank needs to be dropped and cleaned, but it is running on this stuff, so we are back on the veg oil and the diesel. I use these disposable filters in line before the main diesel filter and I've gone through loads of them recently and I don't know if you can see there's a lot of particles in this end there and these keep getting blocked up and I'm throwing them away and looking at them I think that that is like some sort of algae scale or something like that uh, which built up when the van was off the road for 18 months so I think I definitely need to get my tank off and give it a clean out. 
So this is a cold start on that uh, veg oil diesel mix. This is the stuff that was in this when it first broke down. So let's see how it's doing. Lovely. Can't hold that. So the timing is setting this now and it's running really nice. But not only is the timing setting it's running nice, this is now actually running on the oil that I took out of the van uh, when, it, you know, when it wasn't running. So definitely the clog filter was a problem. I'll show you some other filters I've got at the moment. I've taken them out. Every now and again, the filters get clogged up. Uh, and the van stops running, so I really need to drop the tank on this and clean it out. I think I'm suffering from when the van sat for 18 months on the driveway and I had that algae bloom in there. Well, I think that has still caused me a problem in the tank and that's what's causing my running issues. Now, there was a lot of fat deposits in the top of the filter, you know, the uh, proper oil filter when I took it off. So that's probably a problem as well. Um, so right now I'm just going to keep on running it on that oil mix and see how it goes. But for now, we're back up and running. Cheers!